Today I'm going to be talking about the Dutch hormone test and going through some of the frequently asked questions that people ask me about doing this test. Who should do it? When you should do it? But first let's talk about what the Dutch hormone test is. So Dutch has nothing to do with the country. It stands for Dried Urine Test for Comprehensive Hormones. And unlike normal tests which measure blood to analyze hormones, the Dutch test uses a combination of saliva and urine. That way you can get a full picture of the hormonal health over a 24 hour period. With the Dutch or with the blood test, you just look at the hormone levels at one particular time of the day. And this can be fine if you're measuring sex hormones like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. But if you're measuring the adrenal function, you want to look at the 24 hour urine test for the 24 hour cortisol production. And you want to look at the saliva test for the changes in cortisol throughout the day. So the first question I get asked about the Dutch test is when should I take the test? And for men, this is easy. You can do it at any time because your hormones don't change throughout a monthly cycle. If you're menopausal women, they can take it at any time also. But if you're getting a regular menstrual cycle for most women, you want to take it around day 19 to 21 of your cycle. This is the luteal phase of your cycle. If you get a shorter cycle, you can do it a little bit earlier, or if you get a longer cycle, it may be a few days later. And if your cycle is not the normal 28 day cycle, you're best off measuring the date of ovulation and then testing around five to seven days later. And if sometimes your cycle is 21 days one month, 28 the next, 22 the next, 35 the next, and you really don't know when it's coming, one option is to do the Dutch cycle mapping test. That'll measure the hormones every day from day seven until you get your period. That way we can see the changes in hormones throughout the month. The other option is to still check when you ovulate and measure five to seven days later. Keep these samples in the freezer and then check if you get the, your period at the right time. So if your period comes two weeks later, those samples are not going to be any good. We can discard those and send you a new test kit so you can recheck the following month. But if the samples fall into the right time, we can send them back to the lab for analysis. So another common question we get is, what does the Dutch test measure? Well, it's the most comprehensive test for sex hormones. So the difference between the Dutch test and a blood test is that the, a blood test is good because it can measure the LH, FSH levels, that's the messages from the brain to the testes or ovaries to make hormones. But the Dutch test will measure the hormone levels, just like a blood test will, but it'll also measure the metabolites of hormones. So in the case of estrogen, it can show phase one and phase two estrogen detoxification. So you can see if you're metabolizing it down the healthier phase one, correct phase one pathway. And then for men also, this is important, but you can also look at testosterone levels, 5-alpha dihydroxytestosterone, and how you're measuring the 5-alpha DHT and whether it's down the healthy pathway or the more androgenic pathway. So with the Dutch test, you get a lot more information about the sex hormones as far as metabolism of the hormones go. As I've already mentioned, the Dutch test is also the most complete test for measuring adrenal function. A blood test for cortisol only measures cortisol at that one particular time of the day, and it's measuring total cortisol. So it's fairly useless, really. Hormone, the cortisol changes throughout the day. It should start off low and then rise up in the morning and then slowly come back down during the day. You can do a 24 hour urine collection, which is a bit of a hassle. But with the Dutch test, it measures the urine and the free cortisol levels. Some people do a saliva test for cortisol, which is fine, but it's only measuring the free cortisol, which is important, but you're not getting that 24 hour cortisol production picture. You need both of those to get an accurate analysis of the adrenal function. The Dutch test also measures the uh, some organic acid markers too, for B12, B6, melatonin levels, neurotransmitter metabolites, glutathione, and oxidative stress markers. Another common question I get is how long do the results take to be ready? Once the lab receives your sample, the results are normally ready in eight to 10 business days. So when you order the test kit, it's shipped out via express post. You normally get that in a few days. And if you've got to wait for a particular time of the cycle, it may take a week or two for you to actually do the test. But once you've done the test and sent it back to the lab, we'll have the results within you know, that two week period, often quicker these days. Another common question I get is, what is the difference between the Dutch Complete and the Dutch Plus test? 
That's a good question because there's a hundred dollar difference between the two tests. The Dutch Complete was the first Dutch test to come along. And then a few years later, to get a more accurate measurement of the cortisol awakening response, the Dutch Plus, which also combines urine with saliva, was created. And for many people, if you, especially if you're wanting to measure the, the sex hormones as the main test, the Dutch Complete is the best option to go for. It's $100 cheaper, and you're still getting the adrenal measurement for 24-hour cortisol and the changes in cortisol in the day. You're just not getting that more detailed cortisol awakening response in the morning. So that's the biggest difference. The sex hormones are measured exactly the same. The organic acid markers are measured exactly the same. It's just that the Dutch Plus combines saliva and urine to check the adrenals, while the Dutch Complete just is a urine test. So who is the Dutch test for? Well, many women do this test having PMS, PMDD, infertility, but also chronic fatigue types of problems and other autoimmune types of problems, looking at the cortisol levels. Also, men can do this test measuring the sex hormones and adrenal function. So similar sort of thing with the men, chronic fatigue, athletes trying to optimize their performance, preventing, you know, identifying uh, testosterone metabolism for prevention of prostate problems. For women with PCOS, looking at the adrenals, but also testosterone, 5-alpha DHT. So there's a number of different, um, not just sex hormone related conditions, but fatigue related, energy production, performance, and also for women, if you've got a family history of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, making sure you're metabolizing estrogen down that healthy 2-hydroxyestrone pathway, and it's not going down the 4 or the 16-hydroxyestrone pathway. And this can be easily checked in the Dutch test. Another common question is, which is the best test, the saliva test or the Dutch test? I've already sort of explained this a little bit, but the saliva test misses out on that 24 hour cortisol production. So it just looks at the free cortisol levels and doesn't look at cortisone or the total cortisol production. So for me, the Dutch test is a lot better than a, just a simple saliva test. If you've already done a Dutch test, sometimes just following up with the saliva test can be good because you can just see how things have changed with the free cortisol levels. So it's a test I sometimes use, but it's not my favorite test. And if cost is a factor, it's still a good option. Is the Dutch test as accurate as a blood test for measuring the sex hormones? They've done studies showing that the urine testing for hormones is very comparable to blood testing. So it's been validated against that. And I still sometimes would combine both of the tests. For some people, the Dutch test doesn't measure the testosterone levels as accurately as a blood test. This can be true, especially of people of Asian descent, but also other Western people too can find that they're, it's not actually a problem, but they don't, there's a gene that affects the metabolism of testosterone, so it can't be accurately measured with urine. And you'll notice this when you do a Dutch test and it shows you know, virtually no testosterone. Yet, you, know, you don't have the symptoms of low testosterone or no testosterone. So for these people, a blood test is important, but doing both is actually really good because then you get things like LH and FSH from the blood tests, sex hormone binding globulin, and combining it with, the, with the Dutch test, you get the complete picture. Another common question I get is, does the Dutch test measure thyroid function? And the simple answer is no. The best way to measure thyroid function is with a blood test. So if you're doing a blood test at a similar time to, as the Dutch to check sex hormones, I often recommend doing a complete thyroid panel as well measuring TSH, T4, T3, thyroid antibodies, and reverse T3. So how are the samples collected for the Dutch test? Well, you wanna make sure that the samples are not too dilute. So you wanna limit the fluid intake on the day of testing. You wanna avoid caffeine, strenuous exercise, anything that's gonna sort of, you know, outside the normal day, so that's gonna stress your cortisol levels. The urine samples are collected on a special litmus paper. So you collect a sample in a cup, dip the litmus paper, and that's why it's called a dry urine test. You put these strips up for drying for 24 hours before they're sent back to the lab for analysis. The shipping is all included in the cost of the test. You just put the samples in the envelope, which will be provided to you, and that's just express post shipped back to the lab. And all of these test kits come with full instructions and any foods or supplements that you should avoid before testing. Certain medications should be avoided before the test, 
Things like corticosteroid levels are going to greatly influence the adrenal function and change the results. You want to avoid steroid creams as well as steroid oral supplements. And this can include things like prednisone that you may have been prescribed by your doctor. Another common question is, can I take the Dutch test while on hormone therapy or HRT? Well, if you're on the oral contraceptive pill, I recommend you don't do the test because that's going to, unless you want to just to check the adrenal function, because that's going to suppress the sex hormones and give you a false result. But if you're on bioidentical hormone therapy or HRT, you can use the Dutch test to monitor, you know, are you getting too much or too little of the hormone? I always take into account someone's signs and symptoms and how they're actually feeling when recommending dosages of hormones, but the hormone results are important to look into as well. If you're postmenopausal and you're taking HRT, we're just trying to give you enough hormones to make you feel good, not bringing you back to the levels you were when you're 30 years of age. Another common question is how often should I repeat the test? Does it have to be done every few months? You could do that, but I recommend every six to 12 months if you're tracking hormones. You can do cheaper, more frequent blood testing as well. But the Dutch test, I appreciate it. it's not a cheap test to do. So doing it, you know, six to 12 month track how things are improving is a good time frame to implement a treatment plan and make substantial changes to, to your levels. And you don't have to retest either. Like if you're feeling great after making the changes to diet, lifestyle, hormones, you can potentially just track for much cheaper doing blood testing. Another common question is, can the Dutch test help with weight management? High cortisol can affect insulin levels. So high cortisol is often associated with difficulty losing weight. So that's one area I look at if someone's trying to lose weight and they're struggling is look at their cortisol levels. I'd also follow up the blood test for insulin. Testosterone, especially 5-alpha DHT can be associated with weight gain. And that's also associated with PCOS in women and PCOS is a condition that sometimes makes it harder to lose weight. Estrogen dominance is another thing that can lead to weight gain in women, but also men as well. Excess estrogen can lead to excess, excess weight around the breasts and the, and the trunk. So yeah, looking at the results of the Dutch test can help you with weight loss. Another common question is, can I do the Dutch test if I'm pregnant or breastfeeding? I recommend not because hormone levels are vastly different, especially when you're pregnant. I've had a couple of clients do the Dutch test when they didn't realize they were pregnant. And when the results came back, usually they found out they're pregnant by then, but the results are just crazy out of alignment. Everything's just really high. So there's no, there's no need just if you're pregnant and you have to do hormone testing, you could do some blood testing with your doctor. But, and when you're breastfeeding, you wanna wait till you're finished breastfeeding and get your hormones and cycle back into a regular sink before doing the Dutch test. And another question is, you know, what happens if my results are not optimal? What do I do? And this is gonna depend on what the results show. There's so many different variations. You always wanna start with optimizing your diet, making sure you're sleeping, exercising. You can't sort of supplement your way to good health. And then there's different supplements. Uh, we can always do things to help improve the detoxification of estrogen, help with high or low cortisol. So it's really gonna depend on what your results are. And for the full picture, I always look at combining the Dutch test with other pathology and gut testing as well. So if you're interested in doing the Dutch test, we'll put a link in the description of how you can order from Planet Naturopath. We get a discount being a practitioner and we pass this discount on to you. So it's actually cheaper to get the Dutch test through Planet Naturopath than going to Precision Analytical or the Dutch test website. If you have any questions, Leave a comment below and we'll be happy to answer them.